Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Once again, we're working on my beloved 1986 Chevy K5 Blazer. Eight lug conversion for the front. Unfortunately, I had a failure of the factory 10 bolt rear and I'd like to upgrade it to an eight lug 14 bolt anyway. So it all starts with the front. Stay tuned, here's how you make it happen. Real cheap and easy. Start off, jack the vehicle up, pull the front tire off and you're gonna wanna pull the front brake caliper off. These are three eighths. Uh, 3 8 Allen. You might find a metric one here or there, but haven't seen one lately. Pull your caliper slide bolts out, right, like that. You're going to want to check these for wear. Sometimes they're pretty beat up and corroded. You might just want to change them out. Pull this girl out of here. I just put a hook under here. Now we got to start pulling the hub apart. It's a T25 Torx on these particular auto locking hubs. This one's kind of shooting out on its own. That's okay. Sometimes they're hung up on the O-ring and you got to beat them around a little bit. These hubs all come apart a little differently. I'm going to pull off these auto hubs. We're going to put manual locking ones back on so you'll get to see both styles. Uh, for these, these are held in with a snap ring up here. And there's this little retainer that actually keeps these spread so it can't come apart. So that looks something like that. So if you get in here between these, get in with needle nose, give them a squeeze, and then the whole hub comes out. These auto locking hubs are just stupid easy to put in and out. They're so fast. Just one clip and go and see you later. Now you wanna take this snap ring off the stub axle just come in with snap ring pliers. In a pinch, you can use a screwdriver and a pick. I've done it that way before, but if you get snap ring pliers, it makes it a lot easier. You're gonna wanna have a four wheel drive socket for this. I think I've had this for a while. KD2467 is the part number. I think this will fit the Dana 44s and the GM 10 bolt. So this should fit every square body. Get this thing finagled on the nut. and then break that loose. Uh, that's your lock nut. Behind that is a lock washer with pins on it. That one is sometimes a little hard to dingle out of here, so go ahead and pull it on out of here. Same thing for the inside bearing. These are usually finger tight because this is your bearing preload. This really shouldn't be like torqued to any value. It's just kind of how you set your bearing preload. Mine's a little tighter than it should be. I might have been drinking a little heavier last time I put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and get this nut out of here. I'm not impressed that I had to wrench that all the way off. Usually that comes off very easily by hand. So oh, we're replacing it anyway. So once you get to that point now, you can just wiggle this whole rotor assembly off. Beware that your front bearing will fall out. Nothing retains that. Now take off the six spindle bolts. These are a 9 16ths, but they're always rusty. So you kind of got to hammer the socket on. 14 fits just about the same. Now with a mallet, let's beat her around the town a little bit. Sometimes this is really tough, but you don't want to be hitting it with anything that's going to damage the threads. So that's the backing plate. That's a big part of it. That pop free. Not easily, but it pop free. You look at the rust on the rest of the truck, you see where I'm coming from here. Kind of use that gap to your advantage a little bit. Now this is something, if you do any type of off-roading, you need to do this 
because the day you break an axle on the side of the road or in the woods, you're not gonna be wanting to do this kind of crap, right? This spindle needs to come apart with some hand tools very easily. Okay, so finally, there is your spindle. This one's in nice shape. Um, you have a needle bearing in here in which the axle rides in. It's important that that's in good shape. And then this is also a seal surface for the hub and that axle. So you'll see here that this seal is pretty well toast on this axle. So if you wanted to do front U-joints while you're in here, which you should definitely be checking them, you can carefully pull this whole assembly out the side here. This is what it would take to get the axle out anyway. And now you can inspect or replace your U-joints. This one is getting replaced. This is very rusty. I'm not happy about the condition of this axle, but it is what it is. It's a 35 year old truck. Finally, another while you're in here type deal, check your ball joints. Now will be the time, right? It's a tie rod and some more hammering and you can put joints in this thing. So um, it's good to get in here once and again and kind of do all this because you can't really inspect those U joints. Otherwise you can't change them in the axle. Inspecting the ball joints and changing them, it's never easier now. Plus, you get the opportunity to clean all this up. That way, next time this has got to come apart, that spindle comes off in your hand. There's no hammering. There's all not all this carrying on. It wouldn't be a Spank Ranch Garage project without it spiraling out of control. So, what this eight lug swap turned into, turned into upper, lower ball joints. Totally removing the knuckles, cleaning them up, which we'll talk about that in a second. I also ended up re-gearing and putting a locker in this and, you know, basically the whole, the whole shampoo there. But that's not absolutely required for this. Now what is important is you want to clean these faces and this bore because you want your spindle, you want to be able to come right in like that, right? It's the other side spindle, but for fitment purposes, you want a nice snug fit here but you don't want it, you know, being sloppy and crappy. So you want to clean the knuckle and this face up until this fits well, because you saw I had to hammer it off before. For your eight lug swap, you really don't need much. The main thing, you need an eight lug rotor and hub. So being that the eight lug is a 12 and a half inch rotor, while the six lug is a 11 and three quarter or so, you do have to grab the three quarter backing plate here, three quarter ton backing plate. And that backing plate will move your caliper away the proper distance to fit the newer, bigger rotor. Thickness wise, they are similar. So this one is about an inch and a quarter wide. And this very worn half ton rotor is about an inch and an eighth. I think the same caliper will fit. They may have a different part number. The piston size may be slightly different, however, uh, if it fits, it ships. We're just going to keep rolling. Now, some of these trucks got small bearing spindles and some of them got big bearing spindles. And that was an age uh, a data manufacturer break. I don't know what those numbers are, but if you've got a approximately, I don't know, inch and five eighths outer bearing with a two inch inner bearing and a two and a half inch inner seal, You've got the big bearing spindles, and they are the same as the three-quarter spindles, three-quarter ton spindles. So I think a lot of these newer half tons got the same type spindle. Um, I have seen older trucks, though, maybe early 80s, where you pull that rotor off, and it's got this little dinker shaft here. It's very small compared to this. You, you can visually tell. I mean, this is, you know, this is substantial. If it doesn't look like that, you know, put a tape measure on it, put a caliper on it, see what it is. You might need these, you might not. In this case, we did not need them, but I'm going to run them anyway, uh, just because I have them, and I cleaned them up, and they look better. So I'm going to take a little Never Seize, spread it on the lip here. I already inspected this needle bearing. I'm happy with it, no problems there. I will be installing a new axle shaft seal. Timken number 722108, right? This is important. There's three ways you're gonna get water inside your wheel bearings. It's either gonna come through your axle seal, the actual axle shaft seal, or it's gonna come through your hub seal, which rides this surface, or it's gonna come through your actual locking hub seal, which is gonna to seal to your rotor, and we'll get into that later. Now I did put a new 
seal on the axle as well. This is mostly a dust seal. It's going to take 90% of the crap that this seal would see and get rid of it right away. And if you need that one too, that's 722109. These are good numbers to have because uh, my local parts supplier was unable to get me almost all of these. Say they don't fit blazers, they don't fit suburbans, they don't fit whatever. So anyway, I'm gonna set my keyway vertical. There's no rhyme or reason to where to set it, it doesn't matter. And now we can slide this in carefully, not beat up that seal. Get her on the bolt holes. You may have to wiggle the axle around a little for this, and then you can send this all the way in, just like that. And you see how it's seated flush without any hammering or any bull crap going on? That's what we want. So these backing plates, whether they're half ton or three quarter ton, I actually went ahead and took off the dust shields on the back of these, as well as the dust cap that fits over the back of the bearing here. I've had bad luck with them catching rocks and tearing things up. And I think just leaving it raw dog is a better option. But anyway, if you're not sure what side you have here, right? This I know is for the other side, but if you tried to put this on, you have this locking tab right here. It's gonna fit in this depression or this depression. So if we were to just sanity check this, mm, caliper doesn't go on the bottom. And the caliper doesn't go there. We know that. The caliper comes around this side. So I know I have the wrong backing plate. No need to label them. Drop this one on and move it into position. And there we are. So now we can go ahead and torque the spindle and backing plate down and we have a place to mount our caliper. I'm gonna to torque these to 35 foot pounds. You're gonna to wanna to pack fresh grease into your rear hub seals, into your rear hub bearings. And then you're also gonna to wanna to replace those seals if you had them out. So got these bearings all packed up happy. I'm gonna squirt a little grease on the spindle here just so that's less that I have to push in there later. Now on this, I have a fresh seal and a freshly packed bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the spindle on. And there she goes. All right, this isn't a bearing packing video. There's plenty of those on YouTube, but anyway, get this thing set up, push your rotor back and start your outer wheel bearing on the hub there. Nice. Look at that, look at that pin in there is very important. So that pin works in conjunction with this washer here. Now we can kind of show the full picture. But what you have is you have a keyway on your spindle, which is this tab right here. You can see that tab. The tab's gonna fit the keyway on your spindle. And I set my spindle so my keyway's straight up, very easy to catch. And then this nut needs to fall upon one of the holes that are in this washer. So it's gonna be one of those things where you torque your whale bearing in, you like the preload of it, but you're gonna to have to back it off a smidge because you're gonna be catching this washer. Now you could run this washer either way. It moves the holes around a little bit. You have a lot of options to make this work the way you want. So I do thank GM and Dana for that, for offsetting those holes. But anyway, back to business. I clean out the threads here, I clean off the face. Let's get this ran on in there. All right, so these are used bearings. You wanna snug them up a little bit, roll them, let the grease get out of the rollers, kind of snug it, see how it feels. It's gonna be no play, a little bit of preload. If we can flip the washer and get very close, it's always worth a try. They offset it for that reason. So I got lucky. The exact preload that I wanted also lined up with the pin coming through the lock washer. So then I go ahead and clean up the lock nut, right? This is gonna be your final nut that locks all that down. So because the washer is keyed to the spindle and the nut is keyed to the washer through that stud, once I lock this outer nut down, this really can't change. It's a pretty nice system they have here. They still use similar systems in their rear ends. Uh, Dana does, well actually GM Corporate does too with some of their stuff. So you'll still see this widely used in the auto industry and I think it's a really nice way to control bearing preload without having any other issues. All right, time to throw the locking hub back together. So start with my hub center here, get the outside spline lined up and then you can turn it, get the inside spline lined up, whatever, whatever it takes. If you gotta reach in the knuckle and turn it a little bit, there you go. Set her in there, that outer clip goes in now Kind of roll that in and then just poke it 
get it set in its spot. Clips in pretty nice, you can hear that, boom. So now you wanna put the snap ring on the axle shaft. If it's not sticking out far enough, you can reach behind the knuckle, kind of give it a nudge forward. That pulls it into all those fresh seals we put in there. Hit it with the snap ring pliers, come on around. Should be pretty straightforward. Drop her into the groove. All right, the actual drive hub of these hubs is the part that engages the inner splines to the outer splines, right? We've got artificial outer splines here that tie into the rotor. Then we've got another adapter that comes off the axle shaft to these type splines. So this hub is made to break and not damage any hard parts on the truck. And it is spring loaded, so you've got to stuff the spring in first. And then you can stuff your hub in. You'll find a, find a way it lines up good enough, right? And then we have a screw that retains it for servicing. This little screw right here, and this just keeps it from popping out when you have the hub cover off. The very last part of the hub is the actual knob that controls all of this between free spinning and locking. This plastic piece grabs the outside of this unit here that comes in and out. We said this is what actually ties, this, ties it all together. And when you turn this from free to lock, see how that all comes in? Right? And this is also spring loaded. So in the fact that you would have turned this, uh, in the situation where you were to turn this while the vehicle was stationary and the splines didn't align, you'd be preloading that. So as soon as you started rolling and everything kind of comes together, boom, hub locks in, there you are. So let's go ahead and get this hub set on here. So from here out, it's pretty much just a standard brake job. Because I'm using the half-ton calipers, uh, the pads are the same, though I think they're the same anyway, but I did not cross-reference those part numbers. Um, but anyway, the braking should feel identical, maybe have a little more strength due to the bigger rotor that we're using. But otherwise, this should all throw together just like it would in your standard half-ton application. Off a Dodge Ram, like a 2008 or whatever, but this pattern is going to be pretty much any 8 lug GM up until 2016 or so, uh, pretty much any 8 lug Ford up until 97 or 99, whenever they went to the metric pattern, and then pretty much any 8 lug Dodge as well, along with all your 8 lug trailer tires. So this is a very versatile pattern, and I like this pattern just because everything has it. It's very easy to find wheels. Uh, when running this pattern, so that's why I went with this. My other truck has this pattern, all my trailers have this pattern. It just cuts down on the amount of spare tires you gotta bring when you're out doing things. Now I'm gonna be putting a 14 bolt full floater rear in the back of this, which is eight lug, and that's why I did this kind of as a precursor to that. These are temporary tires that are the same diameter as my rears, that way I can still drive this thing for a little while until I get the rear axle swap done. All right, there she is, everything feels good. The other thing to mention is these are standard lugs. I think they're 7, 16, 20 or some thread like that. Where the rear is, if you're gonna use a newer 14 bolt, a disc brake one, which I recommend, that's gonna be a metric thread. Um, I don't know what the thread is off the top of my head, but it's a metric thread. You can buy lugs online, even on Amazon, that fit this thread, but have the external threads to run a factory GM center cap on here. So like these wheels are disgusting in the middle. I'd like to put a standard three quarter ton center cap on this, cut the center out, have the hub stick right through just like it was from the factory. But anyway, for now, we're kind of in the infant stages of this uh, build here, so we'll just leave it as that. Guys, thanks for watching this one. It's a very easy one. Like I said, if you already have a big bearing spindle truck, it's literally just hubs, rotors, and backing plates, and you're on your way. Um, if you have an older truck with the small spindles, it's just a set of spindles, backing plates, hubs, rotors, and then obviously wheels that fit. So very easy swap. It's a good reason to get in there, see if your ball joints are tight, check your U-joints, do all your maintenance related stuff. But overall in all, uh, pretty simple job. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.